Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about fluid equations, um, but specifically residual calculations. So my last video uh, focused on uh, entropy, enthalpy, uh, internal energy equations, but now I'm going to show you a different way um, to calculate these uh, thermodynamic properties using residuals. Um, so my objectives are to go through residual enthalpy, entropy, and residual Gibbs. Um, and the residual Gibbs, um, I'm going to just introduce you to it in this video, but it's going to become uh, important later on when we're actually doing problems. So you might ask, first of all, uh, what is a residual property? So um, a residual property is um, something we're going to use uh, to calculate the difference between a molar property. So it's a molar property, and it's gonna, we're going to use it to calculate the difference between that molar property of a real fluid uh, and it as an ideal gas. So if I have ammonia, let's say, uh, the residual of that would be the difference between it uh, behaving as a real fluid uh, ver versus it as an ideal gas. I know that that adds to the same temperature pressure. So you might see uh, a residual property looking as such M is equal to M ideal gas plus M residual. Uh, so this M is going to be my real, my real fluid, so my real ammonia. This M ideal gas is the ideal gas. So when I subtract those two, so M minus M ideal gas, I get my residual property. And that's at, so the M ideal gas and M uh, are compared at the same temperature and pressure. So I'll write that here. M and M ideal gas are compared at the same T and P for my equation here. And M, your molar property, um, M could be things like um, molar volume, so meter cube per mole, uh, internal energy, um, enthalpy, entropy, Gibbs, you name it, the list goes on. So to start, I want to talk about residual enthalpy. So equation number one, just forget what I am I have shown on the on the right hand side for now. Here is just your general, your general, general equation. So basically what's gonna happen is uh, you know, like in your in the problem that you're gonna deal with, it's gonna say, what is the change in entropy for this process? If this gas uh, goes through, uh, starts at this temperature and pressure and moves to this temperature and pressure, what is the change in enthalpy? So uh, what you're going to have to do is, uh, if you choose to use residual, en residual enthalpy as uh, a way to solve the problem, you're going to start by finding the change in enthalpy of the ideal gas. So if you remember in my fluid uh, equation video, uh, I gave you the equation uh, for an ideal gas, the enthalpy of an ideal gas. So you would use this for your, this would be your delta H ideal gas in that equation. And then your H2 residual and your H1 residual, that's going to come from equations 2, 3, or 4. That's, that's, those, those are what you're going to use to find the residual um, properties. So uh, for for equation two, you can see I have residual enthalpy over uh, R universal gas constant times T critical uh, is equal to all that right hand side. So I'm going to do this in green here. Uh, we know R and T critical. We just have to know our species. That's from the tables. I've already shown that. Uh, in my past videos, T critical is just something you're going to get from your tables, depending on your species. T reduced, you're going to need a temperature. So here, I'll, I'll put that in red. Need 
temp to get that t reduce squared there because t reduce is equal to t over t critical. T reduce is equal to t over t critical. And then you see how I have this uh, partial derivative of my uh, z and t reduced. That means I'm going to need a correlation uh, for my z in terms of my reduced temperature. So if I don't have some correlation that I can work with, uh, then I, I really can't use equation number two here. That's It's not going to work. And it's it's kind of rare you're going to use this. What's more important is usually equation number three. Uh, so it's the same thing, but you'll just notice where I have uh, temperature. Um, it's... Uh, Uh, sorry, where I have temperature, uh, it's not reduced. It's just the regular temperature. And where I have pressure, it's not reduced by temperature. So I'm not, in I'm not integrating with respect to any reduced values. Um, but the one thing I want you to note about equation number three is I'm, I'll write it down here. Equation number three, this little star, um, is to get... Uh, <coughs> sorry, your, uh, your Z... Your, your differential, you know that Z is equal to PV over RT, that's the definition, or uh, you might have some correlation for Z. So you might be given like Z is equal to 3T squared plus uh, 6T um, plus P, I don't know, something like that. So you could do a partial derivative on that, um, on that equation. But the key is uh, Z. So if you if you have that, if correlation Z will be a well, must be not will be must be a function of T and P and must be volume explicit. And you might ask, what does volume explicit mean? Well, that means that your volume is a function of pressure and temperature. V is equal to so everything, um, and I'm talking about this guy over here, this, this partial. So one way you could do it is here, Z is equal to PV over RT. You can do that partial, but you know, you, you got to make sure you have uh, the information to do that. Or the second way you could do it is if you have some correlation that's given to you, um, everything in that correlation must be a function of pressure and temperature. So your Z correlation will be a function of pressure and temperature. And if you have volume in there, you have to make sure that that volume is volume explicit, that it's also just a function of pressure and temperature. So I hope that's that makes sense. Um, for equation number four, um, the last one here, you could see, um, I've shown you on the, my right hand side, um, <coughs> um, what, I, uh, what I use in my equation of states video. So I gave you uh, equations for the Pitzer method. So here you're going to notice in equation four, this R T critical, pretty easy. Those are just things you're going to get from your tables. Uh, <coughs> P reduces, you're going to have to know some pressure. Um, beta naught you look right here, that beta naught, well, that's right here. So you're going to need a temperature to work with that. Um, this, this differential right here, well, you can find that right here on the right-hand side. You're going to need a temperature to work with that also. <coughs> Eccentric factor, well, that's just given... Uh, from your tables. There's nothing to really look for there. Beta 1. 
Over here, you're going to need a temperature to work with that. Uh, T reduced, you're going to need a temperature. And then this differential again. This differential again. Well, that's right over here. So basically, for equation four, you need pressure and temperature and obviously species to solve and you will have everything you need uh, to solve equation four. So equation four um, is, yeah, it's, it's not too complicated. So yeah, usually you're going to be using things like equation three and four in order to get your residual properties, which uh, for equation one. Equation one is the main equation, and then two, three, and four are what you're using to get those residuals. Uh, and yeah, the only equation you're going to see for ideal gas is what I've shown you on the right under enthalpy. Enthalpy, equation number three on the right-hand side, is your ideal gas. All right, next uh, we have entropy. So again, it's really, really similar. It's the same idea. So on the top here, I give you the basic uh, change in entropy equation. And you'll notice that uh, the only thing that's different for the change, the ideal gas uh, for entropy, is we have two this time. So you have one with the heat capacity of constant pressure, which is number five on the right-hand side under entropy here. Or you have uh, CV, so constant volume. And then, <coughs> uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, yeah, remember your CP is uh, a correlation you're going to have in your tables uh, that's given to you, or it might be constant. I don't, I don't know. It just depends on the situation. And then, yeah, you got to make sure you can do your um, your integrals, which you, you'll be good. So the ideal gas is easy. It's the residuals, which is a bit more tricky. So if you look at equation number two here under residual entropy, uh, again, uh, the rules for the partial derivatives on Z and um, right here, this one, for this partial derivative, this integral for number two, same thing as before. So you can either get Z, uh, from being PV over RT, you can use that, or Z as a function of P and T and volume explicit. So again, volume is a function of P and T also. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, again, yeah, it's not really complicated. It's just if I can do that. Number three, uh, you're going to see it all in terms of reduced pressure, temperature, things like that. Um, like, same thing as before, you're going to be given some correlation and you're going to have to do the partial derivatives. Um, yeah, it's it's all based on what you're given. And then equation number four uh, <coughs> is uh, pretty straightforward. R is your universal gas constant. Here is your differentials again. Omega is from your table. So for equation number four, you're going to need P reduced. You're going to need a pressure because P reduced is P over P critical. So you're going to need some pressure given to you. Uh, you're going to need... Uh, and you're going to need some temperature, which is how you're going to get your differentials here using the Pitzer method. All right, not too complicated. And then lastly, residual Gibbs. I'm not really going to explain it that much, but it's going to be more useful for later on in the class when we're doing other problems. But same idea. It's The Gibbs is going to be used as a way to get information on my entropy, enthalpy, things like that. Uh, the Z here, as you see in my, uh, in my integral, same rule as the last two slides. So, uh, it's gotta be a function of pressure and temperature. And if you have, 
uh, some correlation and you see volume in that correlation, that volume has to also be a function of pressure and temperature. And the other way is just saying uh, if you have all the information you need, Z is equal to PV uh, over RT. So same thing as I've done in all my other slides. There's not really um, much for you to say. All right, so here's a summary of every all the equations we've looked at today. Um, the things I want you to check for, for when you're going to uh, jump into a problem and maybe use residuals, is first of all, ask yourself, uh, do I have a non-ideal, non-ideal fluid? Or we can say, like, a real fluid. Is it real? Then, okay, I can use residuals. Because if it's if it's ideal, then here these residuals would all be zero. Residuals it wouldn't make sense what I'm doing. So yeah, you gotta ask yourself that. Uh, then ask yourself the two rules I taught you for Z. So uh, so do I have a correlation for Z? Correlation for Z, which is a function of uh, P and T. So Z as a function of P and T. Or enough info for Z is equal to PV over RT. Uh, and then, yeah, and then also, lastly, you can ask yourself, is using the Pitzer method possible? Do I have, um, do I have uh, a temperature and a pressure that I can work with? And you, sometimes uh, there might be another method that we can use that's faster because the pit 